Welcome to another MedCram lecture. We're going to talk about the Zika virus. This has been a big issue in the news. What is the Zika virus? What kind of symptoms does it cause? Why is it important? What are the consequences? What's the diagnosis and how to treat it? We're going to talk about all of those issues with Zika. So what is Zika? It's a virus that is transmitted via mosquitoes. And it's particularly a big deal right now in the Central American, America's Caribbean area. You should know that it's a RNA virus. And so in that sense, it's just like dengue. It's just like yellow fever, uh, West Nile. Okay, all of these are viruses that are transmitted by mosquitoes in that sense. And specifically, it's the Aedes mosquito, which means that you've got to be aware of this in the daytime because that's when that mosquito feeds. It feeds in the daytime. So it's an RNA virus, and as a result of that, it uses reverse transcriptase, and that is very similar to the HIV virus. So why is this a big deal? Well, they can find this virus in blood, in urine, in semen, saliva, in cerebral spinal fluid, in breast milk, and in amniotic fluid. So the WHO recently said that this was a, a spreading explosively in the area of Central America, northern part of South America, and also the southern part of North America. So the question is, is well, what happens when you're bit by an infected mosquito? Well, if you were to take everybody who was bit by a mosquito who was infected with the Zika virus, only about 20% of them would actually get symptoms. The others would not get any symptoms. So the reason why this is becoming big in the news is for three major reasons. Number one, it's exploding. There seems to be an outbreak, in other words. Number two, it's happening at just the wrong time because as we're giving this lecture right now, this is 2016 and the Olympics are coming to Brazil, which is where this is. So Olympics. And specifically, Brazil. But the third thing is, and this won't change after the Olympics or Brazil, is that one of the most feared complications of this virus, even though hardly anybody ever dies from it, is if a pregnant woman is exposed to this virus and indeed contracts it, there is a concern for birth defects. Specifically, something called microcephaly. That's a small head, basically, and it can cause mental retardation, etc. Specifically and exceptionally, if the infection occurs in the first trimester. That's when the greatest risk is, of course, that's when the head is developing. So if you're bit, you've got about a 20% chance of getting symptoms. So what are those symptoms? The big symptoms that you should look out for is a low-grade fever. That's very nonspecific. But the key there is low-grade fever. The other one is a maculopapular rash. Okay, another one is arthralgias. That means a pain in your joints. So arthralgias, specifically the small joints, like the hand, the small joints of the hands. And the other thing that you'll see is conjunctivitis, so basically red eyes, okay, but not purulent. So that, that would be bacterial, but conjunctivitis. The other thing that we see in terms of birth defects is something else. There's a fourth one, and it's, it's kind of questionable, but it's something called Guillain-Barre syndrome, where people become paralyzed from their feet up and eventually can't breathe. So what are the symptoms that you'll see if we were to take 100 people that got bit by this mosquito that had the virus, and they were actually going to contract the virus? 80% of them might not even have symptoms, but 20% would, and they are, again, low-grade fevers, maculopapular rash, arthralgias, especially in the small joints, and conjunctivitis. The reason why this is a big issue right now that you'll see it is because there's a lot of people that are coming down with this virus in the Caribbean and in, the, in Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, and in Brazil and Venezuela. 
Also because a lot of people from all over the world are going to be flocking to that area of the country, a lot of them of childbearing age, and they're going to want to know whether or not it's worth the risk. And what is the risk? Birth defects, specifically microcephaly, which has been associated with this virus. So what are the other things that this could be? We've talked about the fact that it's contracted from a mosquito. So the big things or the differential diagnosis that you've got to be concerned about is, of course, dengue fever, which is also spread by a mosquito. However, the thing about dengue fever is, is that it gives you a high fever, not a low-grade fever, but a high fever. Also, there is muscle pain associated with this, which is different from arthralgias. And the other thing is that you will not see conjunctivitis. The other thing that you've got to be concerned about in terms of the differential diagnosis is a condition called chikungunya, which has nothing to do with the animals of chickens per se, but chikungunya also has high fever associated with it. But instead of small joints, like as in Zika virus, you're going to have large joints. In fact, these people sometimes can't even walk straight. And it's actually debilitating having this. So how do you make this diagnosis? The, make, the way you make the diagnosis for dengue fever is with serology. What does that mean? That means you're looking for antibodies against the virus. Same thing for chikungunya. You're looking for antibodies against the virus. Okay, that's how you can tell that it's not Zika virus. So how can you tell if it's Zika virus? So what is the diagnosis of Zika if you're a healthcare provider and you want to know? Well, there's two phases. There's an early phase and there's a late phase. And the early phase is basically anything from zero to seven days. And beyond that is seven plus days. And the reason why there's two phases is because early on you have the virus in the blood spreading around. And so that's the best way to make the diagnosis because the body has not yet made fully antibodies against that virus. However, later on, the body would have made antibodies. So in the early phase, this is based on virus detection. So if, as a result of that, you're going to use PCR. Specifically, you're going to use reverse transcriptase PCR because again, this is an RNA virus. So you want to do it that way. Now, Sometimes the virus goes away quickly or is not there. And so if the result is negative, that can't rule it out. But if it's positive, that rules it in. From seven days plus, you're going to be looking at antibodies. So again, you're going to be looking at serology. And here you're going to be looking at Zika virus IgM. Remember, IgM is the antibody that goes up first in an acute infection, and then G takes over. And you're going to want to make sure, because there's a lot of cross-reactivity between Zika antibody and, let's say, Dengue antibody, that the Zika antibody IgM is higher, at least four times higher, than the Dengue fever IgM. If it's not at least four times higher, then the diagnosis is questionable. And if you don't have access to this, you can always ask for the CDC or the public health, depending on which county in the United States you live, or if you're living outside the United States, the WHO. So what about the treatment? What about the treatment for Zika? Well, it's supportive. Just like most viruses, you just need to support them, make sure they're well hydrated, make sure they're not dehydrated, make sure they don't go into renal failure. But because of the fact that there could be some issues with bleeding, you want to use Tylenol instead of aspirin. So you don't want to use aspirin because aspirin can increase the risk of bleeding. There is no absolute cure for Zika virus and there is no vaccination. If you are pregnant and you get infected with the Zika virus, you probably want to go and get professional help in terms of obstetrics and gynecology, and this could involve ultrasonography and serial ultrasonography of the fetus to make sure that it doesn't develop a microcephaly, and if it does, then further evaluation can be performed at that point. So I hope this helps with your understanding of Zika virus. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.